Well, today I'm talking to a former international banker living in faraway countries. That sounds intriguing, doesn't it? But more so is because he has become the author of an international fiction novel, a flair for global storytelling with a tantalizing novel of a of Russian connection, blackmail, deceit, and offbeat relationships. His name is、uh, Stephen Evans Jordan, and his book is Tatiana and the Russian Wolf. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. You straight off course.、Uh, perhaps、uh, international banking has a, a flair that I'm not aware of.、Uh, how did the banking part of your life influence、uh, the newer course you've chosen as a fiction writer? Well, I spent a lot of time in the third world, and time, free time, hangs heavy. I mean, there are no very few distractions like bookstores or movies in English or any of this. And I started taking notes when we were li first living in Jakarta in the early 70s, just on interesting things that have happened、uh, because of the, that the cultural confusion. But just you're talking to people who don't speak much English, and that's maybe a third or fourth language. Uh, there's a lot of confusion.、Uh, there's a lot of corruption,、uh, and, and, and just before I left,、um, an executive at Bank of America said, "Steve, <clears throat> it's not right or wrong. It's just different." And you're going, "Yeah, a lot different." And especially Indonesia. It was、um, in the early '70s after a coup in the mid '60s. It was a military dictatorship. Uh, all this was new. Well, let's put it this way: you, you have a lot of material for good stories, is what what I think you're you're saying. And and now now my local newspaper runs the、uh, New York Times bestsellers list on on Sunday, and I was catching up on that yesterday. And I love how each book has a very succinct, intriguing paragraph about what the novel is about. Now. Uh, how will yours read when it hits that impressive list of books? It's it's a man who loved his mother very very much, and she committed suicide. And he's she left him with a fairly shadowy past. She was a Russian emigre who grew up in、uh, well as a young girl in Russia during the Civil War, and then they fled to Paris, where a lot of them did go.、Uh, and as he starts unwinding. Or unraveling her shadowy past, his present,、uh, his his life begins to unravel as well. And so the question is, he inherited a lot of his mother's talents. However, he's frightened to death that he's inherited her、um, bouts of depression and finally insanity. Now, many dream about writing a novel, but it is for them. It is. It is.、Uh, it really never materializes. Now, you tell how this was a, a 25-year project. What was it in you to persevere and then, you know, finally get it published? It was. It spent a lot of time in, in、uh, desk drawers, and、uh, I, I started working on、um, on short stories. They're a great discipline.、Uh, you've got to get it off the ground in a fairly hurry and land it、uh, correctly. And that gave me a certain discipline. And then I sat down and wrote a meticulous, a very, very long, complete outline of the story I wanted to tell, which is the one I did tell.、Uh, and those are very good for plotting purposes, for putting in、uh, physical descriptions of people,、uh, and keeping the characters pretty much within、uh, within the character you've created. Yeah. Now, now you're you're seventy six now. I, I and how does it feel to complete the project? Is it a feeling of accomplishment, joy, or just another life challenge? It's accomplishment. I, I'm very very happy with that. I, I never really thought it would work,、uh, but I persevered. I started off with uh, probably uh, when it finished,、uh, it was around a hundred thousand words, and I got it down to about eighty five to eighty three thousand. It's、uh, people. I think tend to get it confused with、uh, Russian novels, Dostoevsky in particular. You're going, no, now, this. In other words, a long, a long book, a big book, is that another long, way of looking? A、yeah. long, tedious, yeah. depressing, cold, bad food, the whole works. Yeah. So you were able to bring it down to something a little more digestible. Yeah, that you could probably hop on the plane in San Francisco or、uh, or Sacramento and probably be pretty close to finishing it by the time you landed in New York. That's uh, that's very uh, appealing. Now I've I've written、uh, for years in journalism and providing digital content. For me, it never gets easier. It's always a challenge.、Uh, what is writing like for you? 
I generally do it early in the morning because I'm fresh. Uh, and what I do is usually write in very large slabs of words, maybe five, 6,000 words, and then uh, put it in a drawer and uh, give it about two or three days and then look at it and go, okay, fine, this could use some tightening. Uh, we can get rid of a lot of adverbs if we use better verbs. Uh, we can get rid of the passive voice to the extent possible. Um, making sure that the paragraphs agree, I mean, in terms of the tense. And um, yeah, then start editing. Uh, my wife edits it uh, a lot. Uh, she edited all of it. And uh, have those discussions. Edit um, editing is a, is a tough job and uh, I used to, uh, have an editor when I was uh, doing more writing than I am now and if sometimes uh, you weren't necessarily comfortable you know in the end I began <laughs> began to realize that you know they're right <laughs> uh, yeah and it was um, proofreading is I think the thing that's difficult because I know what I wanted to say and so that's really what I see on the paper and Susan's very good at uh, getting that uh, editing well, yeah, it's a lot of your personalities in there, and people are going, well, this doesn't make any sense, and that's kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a slap in the face, right? Well, it is, yeah. 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 Well, I want to I wanna get into the book, but uh, can you pass on any lessons you learned in the process that uh, can maybe help other would-be fiction authors? I spent a lot of time listening to people talking. Uh, females talk uh, differently than males in many cases. Um, uh, uh, English we speak here in this country doesn't have class distinctions as it does in England, but you can generally determine after maybe uh, you know a couple of exchanges, uh, did the person go to college, uh, is he educated, or is she educated, ta da ta da ta da, and that, and that's part of just keeping the character within the, the, the character that you that I've invented. Yeah. Uh, you're going to show them under fear, anger. Uh, sadness, depression, all this, but they still have to keep within a normal boundary of, uh, of the character. Yeah. Well, uh, so much of uh, Tatiana and the Russian Wolves revolves around uh, Russia, and you straighten me out if I'm wrong, in the uh, late 20th century. What made you decide on that era and that setting? I had spent a lot of time in uh, Yugoslavia in Eastern Europe in 89-90 and you could just feel the, the, the fissures going. And I remember I was in a car with a group of uh, uh, Yugoslav bankers, and they were talking about things in English. And I said, it sounds to me like there's going to be a civil war. And every one of them turned to me and said, no, that's absolutely impossible. And um, I determined that, no, I think it's very possible. <laughs> I guess, yeah, for an outsider can probably see things. Uh, well, you see it a lot, you don't, you're not wrapped up in it, that, you know, they, the extent they are. And, um, and a lot of it, I think, is uh, wishful intentions. And, uh, Absolutely. It, it up, right? Now, I have my own interpretation of Russian wolves. I, I see them as a, as a haunting emotional puzzle that we as humans have trouble solving. I'm assuming this is a kind of an antagonist. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Uh, Tatiana is uh, Tatiana uh, Romanovsky is Alexander Romanovsky's mother. He's the uh, protagonist. Uh, her story is primarily a backstory that collides with his story later on in the novel. Uh, people who suffer from depression, as she did, since she was a small girl in Russia, uh, witnessing the, a lot of the Civil War, and that was just brutal. She named it the Russian Wolves, and people who suffer from depression often name it. Winston Churchill did, and he called it the Black Dog. And the, I think the, the wolves, unlike cats, cats when they hunt, depend on stealth and quickness. Uh, Russian wol well, wolves are pack animals, and what they do if they're after big game, like a deer or something else like that, they hunt in packs. And so one wolf will lead, and then as he gets tired, another wolf will take his place. And it, it, it's just ongoing, and you can't, you know, and she just finally collapsed from trying to get away from the Russian wolves. And she did it through, oh, uh, um, her imagination, um, and just, a lot of things that we're trying to, you know, to just to, to survive. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Now it seems you could find some uh, some pretty tantalizing intrigue working in international banking. Uh, it's been around you a lot, and you already told stories of it. So you uh, probably have some more material. We do. Uh, I've um, 
Yeah, yeah, I have. And uh, one was uh, based here, I'm starting on, it was about a, um, uh, an attempted assassination of a, a major drug dealer in Chicago. And the policeman assigned to the, uh, the case, um, more or less um, <laughs> sides with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the assassin or the attempted. Uh, your work in uh, international banking, no doubt, affected your writing. Yeah, and banking was, especially in international banking, it was, um, you were in a different culture. Uh, it, uh, the banks operated differently, say in Singapore, they were uh, British style banks, the local Chinese banks. Uh, you're dealing with uh, people that um, were Singapore Chinese and you're trying to modify, not modify, but, uh, but build the relationship on American banking, which is primarily uh, lending against anticipated cash flows. The British banks, if you walk in there with a uh, deed to a building and it's worth $4 million, the British bank will, will probably lend you three or four million dollars. I see, okay. The American banker won't. Uh, who would likely uh, really love to read that book? My favorite writers are, are two of them, Evelyn Waugh and, and Elmore Leonard. As someone said, they don't often show up in the same sentence, but it was just Waugh's mastery of the language and, and that, and then Elmore Leonard, uh, he was writing in many cases about uh, Detroit cops and Detroit gangsters. And you're reading the book and it is sort of like, well, he got it. I mean, this is the way that Detroit cops talk. And they talk a lot like the gangsters they're pursuing and, and all of this. Uh, so you're going from elegant to sort of gritty. Any final thoughts about the book and your experiences? Well, yeah, the book itself is, is, is three major parts to it. It was the plight of the Russian immigrants, which is the back backstory that Ta Tatiana brings with her. Uh, the impact of suicide uh, on the loved ones who um, wit not witnessed it or, or uh, you know, are left with the, the residue of the suicide. I had three friends in college who committed suicide after college, and that was depressing and, and difficult to deal with and all this other stuff. But the idea of dealing with a, uh, a close relative suicide, I, I couldn't even think of that until I had to sit down and kind of imagine how, how, how do people react with that? It took a, lot, a fair amount of reading. And then it was also family secrets. Um, Alexander keeps a few, Tatiana kept many of them. People around them knew various bits and pieces of the whole thing. And so how does he bring all that together to a reasonable um, resolution? It's that, and it's a lot of sort of internal work and the rest of it on himself coming to those. Oh, one, one last thing. Uh, also order signed copies from uh, my website, which is Stephen Evans Jordan, Stephen with a PH, Jordan, uh, dot com. And if you're a book club member, we can discount uh, the number of books and send out possible uh, issues or questions to be discussed uh, at the book club meeting. And if you're in larger or greater Chicago, uh, I will most likely be available if you wish. Very good. Stephen, thank you so much. Pleasure. Uh, for anyone who wants to check out the book, Tatiana and the Russian Wolves, uh, it's where Stephen says, and uh, it's also at bloomerboomer.com slash now. That's our in our book section, bloomerboomer.com slash now. In the meantime, take care and we'll see you next time.